Hey everybody, it's Ben, and today we're going to build a battery pack for this Flux EM1 scooter that we've got back here. Uh, this is a pretty cool scooter. It's brand new, and the company that makes those uh, has a newer version. This is actually their earlier version. It's discontinued, and they have a couple of these that they don't have the battery pack. So you can get them dirt cheap, $950 brand new. They've got eight or nine of them uh, still available. Uh, and they uh, agreed to loan me one because I thought, what the heck, I've already got some batteries, so if I can just build a battery and take this for a spin around the block, uh, you know, a great opportunity for a, a kind of a dirt cheap electric vehicle, very practical. The scooters are great because, um, you know, you can park them on a sidewalk, you don't need a motorcycle license, they're very lightweight, uh, don't take up much room in the garage, so they're a great uh, uh, extra vehicle, um, you know, summer only vehicle, that sort of thing. But in front of me, I've got some nickel metal hydride batteries and, you know, NIM cells. And I got these from a Ford Escape hybrid uh, battery that I got at a junkyard. So basically in there are 50 of these sticks. Each stick has five cells in it. These are 1.2 volts nominal, which means basically each stick is six volts. Now, the scooter here is designed for 60 volts. So what I really need is just 10 of these in series connected, positive to negative, positive to negative. And I've got enough to do that. And I also have a number of the pieces of the original battery pack, um, how all these were assembled together. So I've got these kind of trays that makes it a little bit easier to mount these in. So we'll come in close and I'll show you what I'm doing here. Okay, so I got a bunch of things on the table right now, mostly these Ford Escape nickel metal hydride batteries here. Um, I also have the trays for them. So I need 10 of them. So I've got five sticks right here, five more sticks right here. So we're going for a 60 volt nominal. Uh, the other thing is I have all the little bus bars for these guys. So these, uh, these are great because they hold them nice and solid, uh, but they're also the right size for these trays. So the, the cells can just sit in here and they'll be nice and secure. Uh, I also do have my bin of assorted other bus bars. Uh, and right here I've got these straps, which are nice because they're, they're braided, they're flexible, they can carry a lot of current. Um, I think I pulled these out of uh, the Vectrix when I took apart the, the nickel battery pack on there. Uh, now these cells were sitting around for a while, uh, so I threw them on charge right now. Um, I've got a 56 volt universal charger that I'm using for uh, eight of those sticks. And then I've got a power supply here, bench power supply that I'm, I'm charging the last two sticks with here. Now I'm using the nickel because, hey, I've got it, it's free. Now if I was gonna uh, build a new pack from scratch, I would probably use these. These are 3.7 volt lithium manganese uh, 26650 cells. These things are great. They're re really popular with the hobbyists. It's higher voltage than NICAD, and it's also a lot less weight. So it's uh, more energy, more dense, less space. It's basically the same capacity of each of these but uh, essentially three times the uh, voltage. So basically one of these little guys uh, replaces three of those and uh, weighs quite a bit less to boot. Uh, the other thing here is I've got a 50 amp Anderson disconnect. This is a standard industrial part. We use these all the time. Uh, you can get these at industrial suppliers or uh, Napa is a great place. Most people have a, a Napa auto parts store around. They're actually kind of an industrial supplier too, so you can pick one of those up here. So I've already connected the cells, one to the next, to the next, to the next, uh, positive to negative, positive to negative. And here I'm connecting these two halves of the pack. So all I'm doing is using one of these uh, flexible braids to connect one to the other, and then uh, putting one of these screws through it into a matching nut and tightening them down, making sure they're nice and secure. Now, the reason why I'm going kind of sideways here is that way I'll be able to flop this half of the pack up over that half of the pack and stand it up, set it on edge, and it won't be sitting on this connection. That'll be kind of looped to the side instead. So now what I did was I hooked a pair of jumper cables up to an Anderson disconnect that I had with some cable on it, of course, observing polarity and make sure that uh, we've covered our conductors. And I'm gonna test it with a voltmeter. And looking on the voltmeter, we have 68 volts. So now I'm gonna plug it in. 
and then flip the breaker on. That's it. So now let's turn the scooter on. And again, this is just for testing. That's all I'm doing. Just a little test here. Flip the ignition to on. There's not a whole lot that tells you it's on except the, uh, the fuel gauge goes up. And, oh, look at that. I can turn the headlights on, honk the horn. And then, of course, test the wheel. Works great. And, of course, all that was was a little test. So I'm just going to flip the breaker off, unplug this, and then we'll uh, wire up a proper battery pack. So even in just a quick little test there, jumpering the battery pack to the scooter, everything works just fine. So the next thing that I want to do is actually assemble this together in a way that it's nice and secure. Um, nothing's going to shake. All the connections are nice and solid. Um, make sure nothing can move around and uh, connect the Anderson, Anderson disconnect on there. And then I'll have a battery pack that I can put into the scooter. So let's work on that next. I'm gonna make sure we're snug down. The way these Anderson disconnects work is when you buy them, you get two of the uh, the gray housing parts, which don't actually click together at all. Uh, it's actually the pins inside that do that, so you're going to have four of these, and you just put your wire in there and crimp it. This one's designed for a uh, six-gauge cable. You just push it in, crimp it on with the typical uh, wire crimpers, or uh, get fancy, do a hydraulic one. Um, I'm not going to do that just because I already have a perfectly good, already done-up one. And basically, there's kind of a little bit of a shape of a hook, and inside, is a spring. So you just push this all the way in, nice and flat, and it'll go over that spring and then lock into place. And if you need to pull it out, what you do is you take a little screwdriver, push it in there, push that spring down, then you can pull it back out. But basically I got an Anderson disconnect all ready to go into the scooter now.